linear equation y equals a plus bx, which is also known as the least squares regression line. Okay, the normal format I use on these videos is y equals a plus bx because that's what they use on the VCAA for some reason. Um, you might be used to y equals mx plus c or y equals ax plus b, but I think it's good to get into this habit because that's what's on the exams. Just remember the gradient is the one next to the x and the y-intercept is the one that's not next to the x. Um, you normally just hit your calculator to get these values. Um, so you can see I've got my calculator set to that and there's my uh, a and b values. Um, all that happens if you switch to y equals ax plus b is they just swap the a and the b values around. Nothing too complicated there. Sometimes, and this is from the formula sheet, you get this and they're going to tell you that you can calculate b using r, sy and sx. You can often have to do questions where you have to work out R. If you see my previous videos, you can use that to calculate R. And then uh, you can also do it with this with Y bar and X bar, which are basically the means in the Y and X directions. There is another way to calculate uh, Y equals AX plus B, and that's to actually uh, use uh, the graph. So you know uh, Y equals uh, A plus B X uh, because that's what we've got set up here. Uh, so we know y is wrist, so we can automatically get rid of a and c. And then uh, we just need to think about the other two other values. But it, there's a quick, easy elimination here. And there's a, a lovely trick they always like to do is this is not crossing at zero, it's crossing at 21. So if you look at this, you might read the y intercept as being 17.4, which they've put three times here, but it's obviously not 17.4. So the answer is going to be not 17.4. And there's only one answer that is not 17.4, and that's B. And you don't even have to do any calculations on this. Uh, that was all you have to do. So strategies can really help you a lot on these things, which is two pieces of information there. One, the, the wrist was the Y, and the fact that like it doesn't cross at 17.4. But do pay attention to that uh, little trick because it happens on many exams. I think this is 2017. And here we go again. I think this is the 2018 exam or something like that. So we've got Y equals A plus B X. Now all the Y's are the same, all the X's are the same, so we can't do anything there. But they have done that classic trick of it doesn't cross at zero. So if you look up here, that looks like it's 67.2, which is three of our options. So it's definitely that the Y intercept, A, is not 67.2. So we can eliminate all of those. So it's not that one, not that one, and not that one, because they're all saying 67.2, which leaves us the choice between minus 0.91 and minus 1.1. We can see it is definitely minus, so that would have eliminated E as well. And so how do you work it out? Well, if you normally I like to say like um, grab a nice spot. So this spot is a lovely spot here because it's where the intersections are. But there's no other really nice dots to do the intersection. But if you look at what we're spanning here, this is uh, 10 and this is about 11. So remember gradient equals rise over run and so that equals 11 over 10 it's going to be a negative because it's going down so it looks like it must be d because you'll get minus 1.1 okay so when you're writing a report for the linear equation there are actually three sentences you have to make uh, the first one is just stating the equation uh, you don't always have to put it in the big sentence but you've got to remember to change the y and the x you can't just write y and x you've got to make sure that you change those to be in terms of the variables and that's uh, a common thing into here in terms of the variables i'll give some examples uh, on the next slide and then the second one is the slope of the regression line predicts that on average the whatever the response variable is uh, will increase decrease now when increase is if you've got a uh, positive slope and you say decreases if it's a negative slope on that line and that slope is just your b value and you say for every one whatever the unit of the uh, explanatory variable is increase in explanatory variable uh, 
very, very common mistake to get the response and explanatory variables the wrong way around on this. Uh, even some very good students have done that recently. And then the third sentence is the y-intercept uh, of the regression line, and it predicts that on average, the response variable is uh, what the a is when the explanatory variable is zero. And don't forget to put your units in there of explanatory variable. Maybe that doesn't make sense. Let's put that into an example. So imagine you uh, put some stuff in your calculator and you got the A equals 95 and the B equals minus 0 0.32 for this example. In this case, the B stands for the beauty. So when we say in terms of the variables, that's what we're talking about, and the A stands for age. So this is what we mean by in terms of the variables, that key phrase. And there's our statement. And then we say the slope of the regression line predicts that on average beauty decreases. We said decreases because we've got that uh, minus there. Uh, then we say by 0.32 for every one uh, year increase in age. Uh, so as your age goes up, beauty goes down. And then the y-intercept statement, the third one you have to give, uh, is the y-intercept of the regression line predicts that on average beauty is 95 when age is zero years. So apparently there might be some people who are born ugly. Oh well, most people are born beautiful. Now, I wanted to give some uh, other questions that talk about uh, associations and things like that. Um, so here's a question from a past one. It says there is a uh, strong positive association between HDI and carbon dioxide emissions. And then you gotta say which one of these statements uh, is true. Um, so increasing a country's carbon dioxide emissions will, now here's the key phrase here, we've got will and we've got a will here. Uh, so will increase the HDI of the country or decreasing a country's uh, carbon dioxide emissions will increase the HDI. Neither of them are correct because of that annoying little will. All right. Now, the reason is you can't say it definitely will happen. Uh, that's why you're having those other phrases on average or tens. So you should be using things like uh, uh, on average or, or tens like that that kind of phrase okay um and that's why you have those phrases you can't use will and that's why those two are wrong uh c says this session must be a chance occurrence and can be safely ignored that sounds like nonsense doesn't it um countries that have higher hdi tend there's a lovely tend word there that we want so if uh positive association that means you've got this association so you've got this that's HDI and that's your CO2 and it's going like that. So they're both increasing. So you gotta look for the one where they both increase. So if you see here that higher and higher, so they're both increasing, that means that the correct answer is D. But uh, with these big wordy questions, a lot of people get freaked out and uh, don't answer them very well. This is definitely you know the kind of question you should attack because other people won't attack it. Again, another big wordy one, which tends to freak out and scare people. Uh, so you should learn to get uh, friendly with these things uh, so that you, you get that mark that other people don't. Now we've got a strong positive association uh, between number of stray cats and number of stray dogs. All right, so they get, they've told us that because they've given this an actual R value. But they've also said there's a, a positive association between the population of the city and stray cats and stray dogs. So both of those are also linked to the size of the city. All right, and we're saying that the city size has also increased over this time. So which of these statements actually works? Now, uh, let's have a look at the first one. If cat owners paid more attention to keeping dogs off their property, then the number of stray cats reported would decrease. Uh, that just, you know, sell, sounds silly. The association between the number of stray cats and dogs that reported, can it be causal because only a correlation of plus one or minus one? Look, plus one, minus one are very rare in real life. That means the dots are exactly on the line. Doesn't happen. Uh, that's nonsense. You can have uh, a, a correlation. I mean, 0.87 is uh, quite a good one. Even 0.61 and 0.72 are very good, strong uh, causal relationships. There is no logical explanation for the association. Well, they've talked about the city thing, so 
Uh, again, that one's wrong. Um, because larger populations tend to have both a large number of stray cats and stray dogs, the association between the number of stray cats and the number of stray dogs can be explained by a common response to a third variable, which is the increasing population size of the city. That's fairly obvious. And I think a lot of people got this right because the other ones were just nonsense. And let's have a look at E. More stray cats are reported because people are no longer as careful about keeping, you know, none of that comes from the data. So actually, this one was answered quite well. Uh, because it's just the other ones are all nonsense but don't get freaked out by these wordy ones um, and quite a rare one in terms of talking about a uh, common response to a third variable so that's why I thought I'd give us a, an example question for you okay so this is from last year's exam and it says interpret the slope which is this value here because that's y equals a plus b x and in terms of the atmospheric pressure of blah, blah 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 it's that second sentence i'm just going to pause the video so that you know to listen to me write the whole thing out slowly and there's a statement there so if you look at what was actually changed all you had to do was change the pressure at 3 pm increases because it was a uh, positive gradient uh, then we put in the amount the unit the unit and pressure at 9 a.m. And there you go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy for the one mark. Okay, and a common thing to do with once you've got your uh, equation is actually to use that to make a prediction. So use the equation of the least squares line to make a prediction uh, of the atmospheric pressure at 3 p.m. when you're given that the 9 a.m. is 1025 and it tells you to round to the nearest whole number. Uh, now, there is actually a little shortcut cheat on this one. You could have just read it off the graph, because if you go up from 1025, it hits there, and read across in a lovely, funky, wiggly line, and you'll get 1023, which is the answer, by the way. Uh, so 1023 uh, hectopascals. Or you could have hit your calculator, and you put the equation in, and you'll get 1023.035. So again, you get the same answer if you put it into your calculator, but you could have just read it off the graph, even with a slightly wiggly line. And one of the easiest one marks ever, is it extrapolation or interpolation? Well, look, the dot is right there. So there's data to the right, there's data to the left, so it must be interpolation. That gives you some good confidence, doesn't it? Interpolation. One mark for that. Oh, easy.